Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use SQL in your Microsoft Access databases, and I'm going to show you five reasons why, as an Access developer, you should take the time to learn SQL. Today's question comes from Ari in Hollywood, Florida, one of my Platinum members. Ari says, I have a billion queries in my Access database. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not a billion, but he's got a lot. Is there any way to consolidate those so the list is a little more manageable? Most of them are just variations on the same theme, like different ways to sort customer lists. Well, yes, of course, Ari, there's definitely a way you can cut down on that list of queries. In order to do so, you're gonna have to learn a little bit of something called SQL. What is SQL? I'll tell you in just a second, but first, a prerequisite, if you haven't yet watched my Access Beginner 1 class, go watch that now. To learn SQL, I'm assuming you know how to build queries in Microsoft Access, and if you don't know how to build queries, go watch that. My Access Level 1 class, it's four hours long, it's absolutely free. You'll find it on my YouTube channel and on my website, there's a link. You'll also find a link down below in the description. Go click on it and watch that if you don't know what queries are in Microsoft Access. All right, so what is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's basically the programming language that Access queries are based on. I'm sure you're familiar with this. This is the query by design, where you build a query graphically, right? You put the tables in here, here's customer table, you add the fields down below, right? You can sort them, ascending or descending, you can add criteria, okay? Now, behind every one of these queries, you'll find this. This is the SQL, the structured query language, the programming language behind that query. In addition to the queries themselves, SQL is also behind the forms, the reports, the combo boxes, the list boxes, any object in your database that has to get data from a table, there's generally some SQL involved. Here, for example, I've got a combo box, right? That selects the customer ID, which is the hidden column in there, of course, right? The last name and the first name, from the customer table and it sorts it order by last name and first name. That's the SQL statement behind that combo box. Now, do you have to learn SQL to be a good access developer? No, you don't. However, once you do learn a little SQL, it makes you that much better as a developer, makes your databases more powerful, makes them easier to use. And just like I say about VBA, do you have to learn visual basic programming to be a good access developer? No, you don't need it. But once you learn just a couple of commands, you can really do some cool stuff with access. All right, so here are my five reasons why you, an access developer, should learn SQL. Number one, knowing SQL will allow you to modify objects directly without relying on wizards. You can modify forms, the record source behind a form. You can modify the row source of a combo box or a list box and make changes without having to go back to the wizard and rebuild everything. And I'm going to show you examples of how to do both of those things in today's video. Number two, you'll have a better understanding of why Access does what it does and why things are built the way they're built. You'll get a better understanding of how to build queries, of how to structure that language in the combo boxes and in the list boxes and in your forms. Number three, and this is Ari's problem, and this was my problem for many, many years, still is actually. I got tons and tons of queries in my database because I've been building my database over the past like 20 years. And rather than rebuild the whole thing, I just keep adding and adding and adding. And I got millions of queries from way back when I didn't know how to write SQL. So you'll be able to eliminate a lot of those duplicated queries where it's just a slightly different change on a previous query if you know how to write SQL. Number four, your marketability as a developer will increase. SQL is always listed as one of the top skills that employers are looking for. So in addition to just knowing Microsoft Access, now you can say you also know SQL. And number five, if you ever do decide to upgrade to SQL Server later on or another SQL-based server platform, you'll already be one step ahead because you'll know the basic structure of the SQL language from working with it in Access. If you got a small business now, but you're growing and eventually you become a mid-size or a, a large business, you can always take your Access front end and upgrade your back end, your tables and stuff to SQL Server. And knowing SQL makes that job a whole lot easier. And bonus number six, it's easy. SQL is easy to learn. It's a very simple syntax. It's all English. There are very few crazy function names you gotta remember. 
All right, and you'll see in just a second some, some examples of the syntax. It's easy to learn. Okay, before we continue, it's important to note the distinction between the SQL language and SQL server. Now, the SQL language is what I've been talking about so far. It's an actual programming language where you can select data from tables and do other stuff, but it's a language that you will find inside of Microsoft Access and other products like SQL Server, like MySQL, all right? SQL Server is a specific server-based program, a package from Microsoft that handles your data, okay? So the two are different. Sometimes people say to me, hey, do you got any classes in SQL? Well, yeah, I got classes to teach you the SQL language in Access. I've got an Access SQL Server course that teaches you how to upgrade your Access database to SQL Server and so on. So it's important to understand the difference between the two. Right, if someone says, I need to learn SQL, well, which one are you talking about specifically? All right, the program SQL Server or just the language SQL? And yes, there are some minor differences between the two, which gets really crazy, but that's a topic for a different video. Okay, now when it comes to learning the SQL language, the most basic statement is a select statement. And a select statement has some basic parts. There's select, from, where, and order by. For example, a simple statement is select fields or single field from and then a table or multiple tables or even other queries. But this is the basic syntax right there. For example, you could say select customer ID, first name, last name from the customer T table. Okay, the field names are separated with commas. Very easy. And this can be on one line or on multiple lines. Access doesn't care. If you want all of the fields, you just say select star from customer T, like we do in our query graphical designer, right? We just bring down the star to bring all the fields into the query. If you want to add criteria, you use the where clause. For example, select customer ID, first name, last name from the customer table, where last name equals Rost. If you want to use multiple criteria, you can use and and or. For example, where first name equals Richard and last name equals Rost. Or you can put an or there. Or if you know keywords, you can use the like keyword in there as well. There's tons of stuff you could do with this. Today, I'm only basically scratching the surface. If you want to sort the records, you just add the order by clause, right? Order by first name, which field do you want to sort by? You don't need to have the where clause if you don't want it, if you want to see all the records. So here, for example, I've got customer ID, first name, last name, from the customer table. No where condition, so just give me all of them. Sort by last name, then first name. And if you want to sort in reverse order, use the descending keyword, D-E-S-C. So that's it. That's the basics of a select statement. Right there, what I just showed you right there is about 90% of SQL that you'll ever need. And just knowing that will make modifying your databases a whole lot easier. Let me show you some examples. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website if you want to. You'll find links down below. And in here, we've built a couple of simple queries. For example, the customer LFQ, that simply takes the customer ID and it puts together with concatenation, the last name and the first name. Let's take a look at how it's designed in design view. You should know all this already. I'm going to close this property window, right? So we've got the customer ID and we've got another field here that we put together last name and first name. That's called LF. Okay. If I right click right there, you'll see SQL view. You'll also see it right over here if you drop that down. There's about three ways to do everything in Access, right? There's the SQL behind that query. Okay, let me zoom in, Shift F2, so you can see it better, right? It's select customer T dot customer ID, comma, last name and a comma, and first name, that's concatenation. We're gonna call that LF, and then from the customer T, and that's it. That little bit of text right there turns into that with the graphical designer. Let's make another query. Save changes now. Let's go to create and then query design. Let's bring in the customer table. All right, close that. Let's add the star. So I got all the fields down here, right? We learned that in Access Beginner 1. Okay, let's switch to SQL view and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. It's select customer T dot star from customer T. And generally you have to end an SQL statement with a semicolon. 
but an access that's not required. It's not a bad habit to get into, but you don't really need it. But once you start getting into more advanced SQL, yeah, you're going to want it. Okay, let's close this, and we'll go back to Design View. And let's get rid of that star, and we're going to add some specific fields. I'm going to add customer ID, first name, and last name. Generally, when you're dealing with other objects like combo boxes and list boxes and even forms, you don't want to add the star. You don't want all those fields in your combo box. All right, so we're going to work with a couple of fields here. Let's take a look at the SQL for this. Right-click, SQL, and there it is. I'll zoom in again so you can see it better. Right, select customer ID, first name, last name, from customer T. Now, access adds the customer T dot customer ID and then customer T dot first name. That's because if you have multiple tables in your SQL statement, access has to know which table that field comes from. Now, we're not going to do that today, putting multiple tables in here. So if you want to, you can get rid of that customer T dot if you want to. I find it makes the SQL easier to read if you don't have all that in there. All right, but just keep in mind, if you do in the future get into making queries that have multiple tables in them, you need that. Okay, I'll just hit OK. And then I'll go back to Design View. All right, and then I'll run it. And there we go. There's the, just the fields we asked for. Okay. Want to add a sort? Let's sort by last name. Drop the sort box down there. Pick ascending. All right, run it. There you go. Let's go back to SQL view and see how it changed. All right. Now, take a look that access adds back in that customer T dot all the time. All right. So it, it's kind of fruitless to take it out of there, but you get the point, right? There's the order by clause right there. Order by last name. Okay. And you can run it. There it is. Want to sort by first name and last name? Drop that down. Remember, if you want to sort last name first, you have to click this guy and drag it to the left of first name. Access sorts left to right. All right. And in your SQL statement, it'll also be left to right. Last name and then first name. Okay. Want to add criteria, right? Last name equal Rost right down there inside of quotes. And again, SQL view. There's my where condition. Once again, Access adds a lot of extra stuff in here that you don't really need. All right, I'll zoom in. You can see where it's got customer T dot last name equals Ross with a whole ton of parentheses. You don't need most of this stuff. Access is just being thorough just in case you've got multiple fields in there, but that's really all you need. In fact, you can whittle this down if you want to. Let me get rid of all the unnecessary stuff here. There, that's the SQL statement in its simplest form. <laughs> Select customer ID, last name, first name, from customer T, where last name equals Rost, order by last name, first name. Okay? Yes, access does add a lot of superfluous stuff in there, but if you're not sure, just leave it. Now, again, why do I need all this stuff? Well, I'm going to hit cancel. All right, cancel that. Save changes, no. Okay, so I've got my customer list form here. Okay, and right now it's just set up by... The, uh, the whatever the, the records are in there. There's no sort. If you look in the design view, open this guy up here, the properties, you'll see the record source is just customer T. Now, I could set up a query to sort this guy differently. Let's say last name, first name, but then I got to make a query and save it and do all that stuff, right? Whereas I could just come in here in the record source property itself. I'm going to zoom in, shift F2. And now that I know SQL, I can replace this customer T with an SQL statement, I can say select star from customer T order by last name, comma, first name. Now that I know how to write SQL, that goes right in there. Okay, save it, close it, close it, open it back up again, and look at that. It's sorted. And in the extended cut for the members, I'm going to show you how to make a little click event. So you can click on the first name label up here, sort by that, or click on the last name, sort by that. All right, we'll do that in the extended cut. But you can see now how I've already eliminated the need for one query, and that's just one form. Okay? Let's do that again with a combo box. Each one of my customers can have orders, and if you haven't watched my invoicing uh, video, go watch that. It's absolutely free. Again, it's on my website. I'll put a link down below. That's how we build this, and we build the invoice, right, that you can print out and stuff. This is all free. All right, but right here, this combo box has its own row source. Forms and reports have record sources. List boxes and combo boxes have row sources. Let's take a look. Design view. 
open this guy's properties up, and there's the row source property. Look at that. There's already a select statement in there. Now, this guy doesn't use an outside query. It actually is. It's using the last name, first name query that we built. But you can put just a table-based query in here if you want to. But if you want to make changes to this thing and you don't know SQL, you have to rebuild it using the wizard, using the combo box wizard. However, if you know a little SQL, you can change this without having to rebuild the whole thing every time you want to make a change. Let's see how. But first, a word from our sponsor. Who's our sponsor? Well, that's just me. Just me. If you want to learn more about SQL, I've got three whole seminars on the SQL language itself. Part one teaches you all about select statements, all the different clauses, how to enhance it with where conditions, order by clauses, all that different stuff. We integrate it into forms and reports. We do all kinds of cool things. That's part one. Part two is all about action queries, right? Using SQL to actually change the data in your database, update queries, insert queries, append queries, right? All kinds of cool stuff. We'll also do union queries. Union query is something you can only do with SQL. You can't do it in the graphical designer. That's where you take data from two tables and put them together so it looks like one table, right? Parts one and two, lots of great information. Part three is about modifying the structure of your tables using SQL. That's like adding fields and stuff like that. That's a lot more advanced. Most people don't go as far as part three. You don't really need that stuff. But one and two, mm, lots of great stuff in there. You'll find that on my website, 59cd.com slash SQL. I'll put a link down below that you can click on. And that was the quick word from our sponsor, me. All right, so how can I modify this thing in here? Let's take a peek at it. Let's shift F2, zoom in. So we got, we're, we're going to customer LFQ and getting customer ID and then the LF field, right? From that query, order by whatever. Okay, so we could probably eliminate that query if this is the only place we're using it by grabbing the SQL out of that query. Watch this. I can come over in here, right? Customer LFQ, design view. This is all that query is, right? Let's take a look at your, let me get rid of this. Let's take a look at your SQL. Okay, so your select customer ID, last name and first name from customer T. Let's just, let's just copy that. Close it. Come into this guy here. Okay. And what we're going to do is delete all this. And we're going to say, paste that stuff in. All right, let's get rid of the customer T dot. All right, I want customer ID. Then I want last name, comma, first name. I can get rid of the as LF. We don't need that anymore either. From customer T. All right, and then we had an order by on there, right? Order by last name, comma, first name. And if you want to, you can get rid of these brackets too. Because you are following my naming convention, you took my Access Beginner Level 1 class, you know not to put spaces in your field names. All right, that's the only reason why you would need brackets, so don't use brackets. I get people every day that send me problems. That is because they didn't put the proper brackets around a field name that they have spaces in. So don't do that. So there, there's the SQL statement for that combo box, which does exactly the same thing that that query was doing over there. So now I've eliminated the need for two queries, right? Close that, close it, save it, open it back up again, and there's the same thing with custom SQL behind it. And in the extended cut for the members, I'm gonna show you how we can click on this and change the way that this list appears. We can sort last name, first name, or we'll flip it around and do first name, last name. Okay, then we'll do that for the members. That involves a little bit of programming. So that's pretty much it. Now you can come in here and you can get rid of this guy. If you're sure you're not using it anywhere else, you can, you can delete it. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the only place we have it. Okay, and there you go. That's how you use SQL. That's the basics of a select statement. There's tons more to learn. And again, I cover lots more in my SQL seminars. And if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, we're going to do those two things that I mentioned. We're going to take the customer list and we're going to make it so you can click on the label up here, first name or last name, and change the sort of the customer list. Then we're going to make it so you can click on this little button and change how this combo box appears. All right, we're going to change the row source and the record source of those two things using a little VBA and a little SQL. All right, here's the member database, All right? First name, click, last name, click. See that? It just changes the SQL in the form based on which label you click on.
Then you want to open somebody up like this customer here. Go to their order form. All right. Now this appears last name, first name, but you can change it by clicking on this label. And now it's first name, last name. Same data, just displayed and sorted differently. See? Sort last name, first name. Sort first name, last name. See that? That's pretty cool, huh? Sometimes you don't know if you're looking for a customer. If you know the customer's first name, you might want to sort that list to find Jean-Luc, for example. All right. See how that works? That all is covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one, all of them. There's like 240 some of them now, I think. Approaching 250. Gold members can download these databases and you get access to the code vault on my website with all kinds of cool VBA code. So that's the extended cut for the members. So what are you waiting for? Join today. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.